Hey guys, and welcome back to this class, Artificial Intelligence Reinforcement Learning in Python. In this lecture, we are going to take a deeper look at the concept of rewards. One difficult part of reinforcement learning is how to define rewards. You can think of us, the programmers, as sort of coaches to the AI. Maybe a pet owner is a good analogy too. So if you have a pet, you can relate the material you learn in this course to real life. The reward is something we give to the agent, so we can define how we're going to reward the agent, which in turn will drive how it learns. For example, if we give it the same reward no matter what it does, then the agent will probably just end up acting very randomly, since any action will lead to the same value. That's like giving your pet a treat, even when it behaves badly. You don't want to do that because it's going to encourage bad behavior. One good example of how to define rewards is a maze. Imagine you're a robot and you've never seen this maze before. So you kind of just randomly move along trying to find your way out. The goal, which is to exit the maze, gives you a reward of one. Otherwise, you get nothing. Now, to most people, that seems reasonable, and it is reasonable. However, with this reward structure, the robot may never actually solve the maze. Remember that the robot only knows about what it's experienced. So if it's only ever seen a reward of zero, then it will think, that's the best I can do. A better solution would be to give the robot a reward of minus one for every step it takes, and in that way it will be encouraged to solve the maze as quickly as possible. One point of caution is to not build in your own prior knowledge into the AI. For example, in the game of chess, the agent should be only rewarded for winning, not for doing things like taking your opponent's pieces or implementing some strategy that you read about in a chess book. You want to leave the agent free to come up with its own solution. The danger of rewarding the agent for achieving sub-goals is that they might find a novel way to maximize the reward for the sub-goals without actually winning the game. For example, taking all but one of the opponent's chess pieces and then losing. So to summarize that, we can say that the reward signal is your way of communicating to the agent what you want it to achieve, not how you want it to be achieved. 